The Bears break last week's low in an effort to sink the market. Can the Bulls fight back? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, I told you that the Bulls' backs were up against the wall and that last week's low was a pretty pivotal area, and if they broke that, it's a big warning to the Bulls. The Bears did break that area. Now the question is, can they close the week below that low? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the market moving lower, it does change our counts just a little bit. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. All right, guys, so here we are on the four-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And I've zoomed out here because we have some people that just kind of don't understand what's going on. And I have a lot of people who wanted a big picture update anyway. Uh, we've been doing some of those lately. I'm going to zoom in and give us a micro count at, after this. But I do want to give a big pick look. Back here on October 12th, I did a video when we were coming into 3,500 that said this should be the bottom and we should be bouncing in an ABC pattern up toward 42 to 4,300. A lot of people took that 4,300 and have tried to cram it in my face. I say, hey, I told you at 3,500 we were going up 800 points and we went up 710 so far, but to each his own. So in that pattern, this ABC, the reason we're looking for 4,300 is because the typical retrace of a wave B, which is what we would expect this to be, is the 618, which is 4,310. However, it is possible that we came up short. The 50% the retrace, which is 4,155, was eclipsed, and that is also a wave B target. It's the less common wave B target, as is the 764. Most often, you hit the 618 at 4,310. So we were looking for 4,310, and we still may get there. The pattern, however, is getting a little rougher for the bulls for that particular move. But from that point, once we make that top, we are looking for a bigger C wave down that will break these lows and take us down toward the 2,500 to 3,000 area in a C wave that will be pretty strong. So overall, short term, we're still uh, seeing if the bulls can push up to 4,300. But overall, we are bearish the market, and that is based on the move down our call of the move up back into this area that we got, and now uh, we are waiting for the micro count to play out and get our next move. So that is the struggle of Elliott Wave. The micro counts can be very difficult because they move pretty quickly, and we are in a Wave 4 overall pattern, and those tend to shift and be very difficult. So we are changing our counts pretty regularly the last probably three weeks because of the micro count mess that we're in. But in the macro count, Elliott Wave is almost untouchable as an indicator. Most people down here at 3,500 were calling for the end. They thought we were going to 2,000. And I said this should be the bottom based on the structure, based on Elliott Wave and the macro targets. And we should be looking for a bounce up toward that 4,300 area. And here we are. So let's jump into the micro count and look at where we are. Okay, guys. So here we are on the one-hour futures chart. And from the last high here at the uh, 4,211, 4,210 area, we did not get what you would call an impulsive wave down. This is a very ugly structure right here. It's a pretty clear three-wave structure and an ABC. And then we got the rally up that we're looking at right now. It held our support area and uh, pushed up back, almost eclipsing this high. I came within just a couple ticks of breaking over it, but they were unable to so far. So with that, our most likely pattern, okay? And this is another thing to note about Elliott Wave. I do give both a primary count, which is what I truly expect the market to do, and an alternate count in case that doesn't play out. It's important to know when things fail and why they fail and where they're going if they do fail. So yes, you do get an up and a down count. And the reason for that is so you understand, hey, if I'm in a trade here and this level breaks, it's important to get out of that trade or to get into a trade. So it's very important to understand key levels and both the positive and negative view of the market. My primary count is what I expect the market to do. The alternate count is what I expect the market to do if the primary count fails. All structures, all technical analysis has failure points. No indicator is perfect, including Elliott Wave. So another key note there about Elliott Wave. So here we go from this high right here, this A wave high. We are in what could be a bigger bullish triangle for the B wave, where you'd have A, B, C, D, and then you'd get this E down, okay, to the 39.50, 39.20 area to complete this uh, triangle move, and then we'd look for that C wave higher up into the 4300 zone to complete the overall move. So that is what we would look for in an overall count that does point us more directly lower. 
The question is, how are we going to get to this E-Wave area, this 3950 area? Will it be directly or will it be um, in a bounce first and then down? So let's zoom in a little bit more here and see where we're at. Okay, so off of the high, this to me, it looks like a pretty clear ABC. They've hit the 1.0 at about 40.67. They spiked just below it. They've been chopping in this area for a little bit now. It's not an impulsive move to the upside. The bulls do have one tiny little hope if they can thread the needle, get one low that's maybe a couple points lower than we are right now, and then start an impulsive move higher. They could try to do something like that. That is extremely unlikely in my opinion, but it is something just to keep in the back of your mind if they do kind of give you a quick spike low and a really strong move up. Just keep that thought in the back of your mind. But primary count, we are looking for this to be an ABC that's wrapping up here. It could push a little lower to 4043. Um, and then we would look for an ABC bounce. Okay, up for the B wave. And then you'd look for that C wave down to the 3900, 3950 area to complete this E wave but then we would be looking for a bounce there um, to start the C wave. Now, if they get down here in the 3,900 area and they cannot hold support and they start to break through 3,900, 3,800 is a very big level for the bulls to hold and for the bears to break. If 3,800 breaks, it's very likely we're going to attack that 3,900 or 3,500 low on the ES over here. It's very likely we're going to come down and attack that and break through. And if that's the case, we would be looking at the 2,500 to 3,000 area on the S&P 500. So a uh, overall, that would be the primary count. So as I said, the primary count is what I expect the market to do. If they do extend directly down, you would want to see them hit the 40, 43 area and hold under 4,105. A break of 4,105 makes the direct move down very unlikely. But if they can come down and hit 4043 and bounce a little bit and then come down and hit 4,005, then we could see a direct move down toward the 3960 area, 67 area to complete that C wave down in a more direct manner. I don't count this as a wave three that we would fall off the cliff and break 3,800 as it does not have a very impulsive structure off the top. This is a pretty clear three wave move down and bounce up. And then you have a one, two setup that could potentially play out. But overall, to me, it looks like a C wave um, where we're trying to end wave five down here around the 1.01236 and then bounce in an ABC. Over on the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's been playing by the rules a lot better. We got a really nice five wave structure up. You had a pretty clear three wave structure down for an ABC. You got a pretty decent five wave structure up. And then you got a wave two down that's still well above last week's lows. Where the ES broke last week's lows, NASDAQ has been holding up very well and does have a bullish posture, but it does need the ES to come along with it to truly break out. We would look for the NASDAQ to hold these lows down here. Again, below that 12, 925 area is a warning to the bulls. As long as they are above that area, we would look for a impulsive move up that takes out the 13, 453 area to give us an indication that we are on a more direct move up to the 13, 702 area. Now, if they do break the 12, 925 level, that is a warning that we could be coming down to break the lows on the NASDAQ as well, like the ES did. And that would lead us to a test of 12,500. If that breaks, then we could be in a lookout below moment on the NASDAQ as well. Guys, if you like the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link and it will take you right over to the web page. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans and they both come with a seven day free trial because I want you to get in there and make sure you love it and become part of the trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. We just started our training material and our first course is the Elliott Wave for Beginners course. It's Elliott Wave the way I teach and use it. And it's how we identify these macro counts and understand the big picture on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ so well. It does come in both of our trading rooms. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing trade, which means our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are interested in day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that absolutely crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you huge multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the trade that's so unique. Something you kind of have to see to understand, and that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. 
He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we would love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, key takeaways for today. For the ES, we're looking for him to hold around the 4043 area and then bounce in an ABC structure up. That ABC structure should target around the 4134 to 51 areas. Then we would look for a C wave down into the 3950, 3900 area to give us E of the triangle. From there, we would look for support. Over on the NASDAQ, they have a more bullish setup and they can still push directly higher as long as they're above the 12,925 area and ultimately last week's lows. As long as they're above this low, they can still push directly higher and a break of 13,453 would be an indication of that breakout. Guys, it's Cinco de Mayo. It's the weekend. Grab yourself a margarita or a drink, and I will talk to you next week.